on chapter ethics and safety measures in computing so we are going to start with invention of internet so internet was invented in 1969 internet is one of the biggest achievements of human kind after electricity we can say that because uh, without internet we cannot think of this world currently right now because uh, internet is one of the essential services after electricity so what are the demerits and demerits of internet so advantage is it just stores all the information because internet stores lot of informations in the servers which are spread throughout the world like uh, information like uh, projects like uh, data researches researches projects and you know, pictures videos songs these are all these are all information which are stored in servers and communication so internet has, internet is, has provided a, a big boom in internet connection and communication has been developed as it is so communication like uh, social network online chatting these kind of things research and development has been also been improved with internet because with the advent of internet data of different kind of institutes which have which have done research in different kinds of field publish their data in the internet so anybody can read the research and development and gain knowledge and improve their mindset and their academics advertisements because uh, advertisement is, is a big issue and a big thing in internet the thing is that if you suppose you have started a business and you want to spread your business throughout the entire world and so if you do a local advertisement it's going it's not going to be spread so internet if you publish your ad in the internet the internet is going to provide the ad throughout the throughout the entire world is going to spread it so every country will be able to get knowledge some kind of knowledge about their business and which you might in turn be a big boom to a business transfer of files because we are going to down we are always downloading videos songs and pdfs in the internet so transfer of files has has been improved we can also send the data to every, to your favorite person through the emails Uh, like at with through emails feature like attachments and online services like uh, zomato flipkart amazon so this is the base these are different online services which provide different categories of services through online service to online so we can say that internet has provided a big boom in uh, providing a delivery service taking a uh, taking up online food orders and right now we have all we have come so much fast forward that uh, medicines are not now being supplied then job opportunities websites like nokri.com linkedin has provided a huge opportunity to a lot of persons to gain information and apply for jobs then social networking like uh, websites like facebook what whatsapp twitter reddit and this kind of so the twin sites have provided uh, a a knowledge and connects us to our friends and families who are living in distant places so what are the disadvantages quality and accuracy because all the information that are available in the internet are not always correct because it is open content and anybody can edit and update the data which is might not which might not be always be true then the vulnerability so internet is is open to all thus not everybody has the correct mindset to use the internet because somebody may harm through phishing gambling spamming hacking this kind of attacks to other persons which might destroy the functionality and uh, and leave a bad taste to the person 
then comes open content open content meaning that any data that is available in the open internet which can be accessed by everybody is defined as open content then comes plagiarism plagiarism is a is a big issue in the academic world because since the internet is open content anybody can copy the data copy the suppose copy any writing on the internet and uh, pass it pass it as its own so this kind of thing is you know this honesty they are not creating the data and content they are just stealing the content so and uh, pass it as its own so if we can say that plagiarism is a crime then piracy piracy we can say that uh, any song any movies any pictures and any so any softwares and games which are available in the internet which are which has to be paid generally are being stolen and sold for free so this is a crime because the creator is not getting the money that they have invested in so this is also a crime because basically this is a stealing this is an act of stealing and other problems like spamming phishing hacking gambling and addiction on the internet are all the major disadvantages of internet so what are the computing ethics computing ethics are the guidelines that anybody should follow to stay stay safe and behave professionally so that others users experience should not be hampered so what are the ethical practices should be kept in mind while accessing the internet the internet should not be used to harm in the people intentionally second rumors fake news and censorship which should, should not be forwarded and should and it should be encouraged for fact checking pirates pirated software should not be used because it's a act of piracy and uh, anybody's in privacy should not be invaded like taking screenshots of instagram accounts facebook facebook accounts of other persons and and keeping them is accept private is accept invading an individual privacy then comes children and children and students should access internet under the parental supervision because the internet is open so there are lot of information available which which doesn't know what who are children who are not children so some kind of information should not be accessed by the children and students so it has to be, it, so the supervision should be done so that what kind of content is being accessed by the street children and students so what are the different unethical practices plagiarism is a big issue in academic because it's a act of stealing someone's work and passing it passing it as their own so so the original creator is not being reminded or being praised then cyberbullying cyberbullying is the act of frightening or threatening someone through by threats slangs and violent pictures primarily this kind of activities are primarily seen in facebook whatsapp and online accounts then hacking hacking is the act of breaking someone's computer network and stealing the files and folders or sometimes deleting which are which is also a act of invading someone's privacy hacking is generally a crime then phishing phishing is the act of making copy of some websites and sending them through emails so the person who has been attacked clicks on the email gets confused and thus enters the credential and gets stolen so we you can say that phishing is also a great crime but it's, it is also a act procedure of hacking then spamming spamming is the act of sending unsolicited emails to large number of persons in the form of advertisements and software piracy is the act of downloading softwares games movies without paying the creator the right amount that they should be getting but they are not getting since we have seen it is being stolen and sent and, and sold for free so what are the online threats malware malware are programs of softwares which have a malicious intent and when it gets installed on your computer or your phone steals your contact data whatever data you are accessing 
and uh, sometimes may delete or damage your device then phishing phishing is also a act of hacking but it is a way of impersonating someone's someone to steal personal uh, personal information credential and viruses are softwares which has a capability to destroy information or might damage a certain kind of devices if they have the access to the firmware then backdoors are programs which helps to bypass the authentication bypass meaning that to avoid the user id login and getting access to the secure system so we can also say that backdoor is also a act of hacking and then key loggers key loggers are programs which stores in so it stores information and what information they store they store any kind of keystrokes we are making on a keyboard they are being stored in a certain text document so without the knowledge of the user so when the when the person who has installed the keylogger can access the keylogger and take away the password or email so what are the preventive measures to stay safe in the internet everybody should keep a strong password the password must not contain names date of birth which are which is quite predictable and guessable and uh, the next thing is that nobody should reuse the same password for every website because since if some some when one one of the website gets hacked the same password can be used to trigger other other website hacking and such kind of things are going on right now so how to get, get how to how to avoid this the avoid is that we can do two factor authentication two two factor authentication what does it do in case of two factor authentication if an account has the user has to enter their email id password or sometimes use their phone number and press next the the system first checks that email id and password and then allows to the second step that is otp so otp since you have created a email since during the creation of email it asks always a phone number so the otp goes to the phone number and whenever you check your phone number there is a four digit or six digit number which which you have to enter and after verification of the otp the use the the user is being allowed to access the data so we can say that two factor authentication provides two 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 doors two free two two doors back to back simultaneous doors so that if one gets hacked the other doesn't and everybody should change their password every month because uh, if they change their password frequently the pass the generally their accounts uh, hacking probability gets reduced anybody should not download unknown software without very valid permissions because uh, any unknown software like uh, which they don't know who is the publisher might damage your computer because they might they must they may contain malware and anybody should not share password with another because in case if you share password password with your friends you must change your password within the same time and then everybody should be encouraged to use virtual keyboards virtual keyboards are softwares which are available in your machine so if without the using a physical keyboard you are typing the password with virtual keyboard with your mouse and which doesn't so the key logger doesn't gets the permission to to access to uh, to in to infiltrate the keystrokes and uh, every anybody should not respond to unknown persons in the email they should respond to certain persons they which they know was a mailed to email to social media the positive effects are it helps us to connect with extended family members and it helps us to get our own opinion and uh, it we since the internet is open we get a lot of comments we read a lot of comments and uh, posts of other persons and we have 
we might or might not agree with the opinion. So this kind of thing allows us to keep our mind open-minded. And self-expression is encouraged because we have a fundamental right of freedom of speech. Then negative effects, cyberbullying, addiction, creation creates a virtual environment and affects young minds and abundance of undesired information. What is a firewall? Firewall is a piece of a program which is always present on your computer like Windows firewall. And in the picture you are seeing is a Ubuntu firewall. You see uh, this firewall is called UCF firewall. There are a lot of firewalls are available. So the firewall is a program that checks what data is what what data is getting inside and outside because if the data because they have certain criteria that the data has to be that data has to pass if it if if it does not um, matches the criteria of the firewall the firewall won't allow so it creates a barrier so firewall is a key protection layer so that our machine or our devices stay safe in the internet. What are digital footprints? So basically, digit, whenever a person opens certain websites, apps on the internet, the companies who created them, they store their data, they store the user information, some, some, kind of, some kind of information in in their cookies in their device cookies so these device cookies are being used to track users and uh, target ads so suppose we have gone to a website like amazon.in and search for a mobile you will be seeing that even after you close the website you will be you will be seeing the same ad in different kind of places, in different kinds of places, and in different kinds of websites. So it basically it's getting it's getting uh, your information and tracking you. So these are called digital footprints. So hopefully you guys understood on the chapter of ethics.